it's really about starting a conversation that goes beyond ticker box compliance to actually creating uh, workplaces that truly are fun uh, for young people to work in, but are truly safe. So it's my pleasure to uh, welcome, to kick off our forum. She has a distinguished career in child protection and the sort of law reform and regulation that strives to keep children genuinely safe. So would you please welcome Karen Bowman. We're very um, excited about having this seminar. It is the first uh, level of engagement that we intend to have over the next 12 months and beyond uh, with the sector. This is the start of what I hope will be um, a very fruitful engagement about moving our regulation along in order to focus on child safe organisations. There's a really good reason for the Children and Young Persons Care and Protection Act. You need it because it protects children um, involved because their families um, and themselves can't always advocate on their behalf <coughs> and that there are environmental risks specific to children um, that are not always identified or well understood. And we've seen in the Royal Commission recently that the most important source of advice on getting that right has been children themselves. Um, they, they are the ones that pick up the cues first. They are the ones that see the signs. If kids are in an environment where they can speak out, they can say they're uncomfortable and they know what to say, that's half the battle. And this is a little thing that we've developed called Sally on the Set. On a shoot, someone should always be close to hand to help you. You know they need to give you a supervisor, right? That's a supervisor, not a manicurist. Later on, I'll show you around so you know where everything is. Emma here is my point of contact because Mum couldn't make it. Hey, you know you can call her at any time. Is there a way to get Mum to not call? No, but we will need you to turn your phone off on set. Oh, OK, great. Hi, Mum. Yep, I'm OK. Another time, I felt things were definitely not OK. So I can use the pics as publicity shots. But what will you use them for? It's it's blog for up-and-coming talent. It's likey private. It's a little... It's, well, you know... And you want me to wear this? You you want to be starred or not? Oh, really? You're right. Well, being a star would be great, but I feel a bit uncomfortable with this, so... Bye! Hmm? Another time, they forgot to mention a few important details. I didn't sign up for this! So, not qualified. I found out that publicity's ramping up, so we can start thinking about social media. Great, can we? Sure. But I will need to check with a producer and you need to check with your parents before you can send them out. The entertainment industry can be great fun. Remember, when you're working, don't overcommit yourself. Take rest breaks and always speak up if you have concerns. in concluding, um, I'll just leave you with uh, one final message. Um, that a happy and safe child is a better performing child um, and will stay engaged with the industry and protecting your investment and your reputation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karen. We might start uh, by meeting some people who uh, work in the industry themselves and I wonder if I could invite Kai Baldwin and Sally Baldwin to come. This is a bit of an introduction to Kai's life. All right, so that was in Untermilkwood. Um, that was Australia's Got Talent at the end of my performance. Um, that was rehearsals for the finals. I didn't get to perform that, but it was lots of fun. Um, that again was more rehearsals. Uh, that was an interview for Australia's Got Talent. Uh, this is my first performance, um, uh, Madame Butterfly. Mary Poppins, um, I'm there on the side. <coughs> That was amazing, this workshop. That was so much fun. Everyone had a big laugh. If, if you were advising another mum, what would you say? Two or three things. So it's just educating your child. I mean, it all comes down to making sure that they, you know, know what to look for and are willing to tell you about it. And you're willing to, to go and do something about it and never be afraid of people um, threatening <laughs> your career. Or we, We've had that. Um, and, you know, just being confident to say, no, this isn't right, and, and we're walking. One more second to meet Kate Rooney. Kate, do you want to explain who you are and what you do? Hello, everybody. I work for the Voice Kids, so I'm a talent liaison basically between people like the wonderful Kai, who worked with us on the Voice Kids, and the production itself. 
if, if a complaint came up that there was some concern about inappropriate touching or something, how would that be handled in your world? We had, um, with all of our uh, children that we were looking after, we had um, buddies, which were basically talent chat rooms. So we had, for about every six children, we had a buddy or a chaperone that was escorting each child and family around to a different location. We were filming interviews, we were also uh, performing and doing vocal workshops. Those buddies and myself, uh, being the senior artist coordinator, everything was fed through me. So any co complaint would come directly to, through to me and then of course, straight to the, you know, the proper authority. Yeah. But it's my great pleasure now to welcome Scott Howe, the commercial director of Shine Australia, to give an industry perspective. And uh, he's been working, as we've just heard, very closely with the Office of the Children's Guardian. Would you please welcome Scott Howe? How old are you, Jake? 21, 22? Um, nine years old. 12, 13, 11, 10 years old, 13, 11, 14, 10, 12, I'm 8 years old. The Voice Kids, coming soon to nine. Um, as you can see there, we started with 8,000 kids that came to audition to get through. 100 came through the blind audition, 45 through the battle rounds, 15 through the thing offs, and uh, 6 through the final. That's a lot of kids, and it's a lot of parents too. Um, and then there's buddies, psychologists, crew of hundreds, a pretty impossible schedule, and the job of making the show, this show, and the adult show at the same time. Um, you might think we viewed making The Voice Kids as some trepidation. Um, you might think we had some negative expectations of how things might operate with the Office of Children's Guardians and what it would mean to make a program involving so many. And honestly, you'd be a little bit right. Um, but ultimately, our fears were largely misfounded. Um, slowly but surely, due to the good work of an amazing production team, um, our clinical psychologist, the good services of the representatives of the Office of Children's Guardian, and I'm gonna call the OCG from here, if you will. All the parents, and last but not least, uh, through the hard work, determination, resilience and sheer talent of a great bunch of kids, the impossible became possible. Um, our main priority is looking after the kids, really. All the direct contact stuff, the, the staff, the, the people doing hair and makeup, and vocal coaches and so on, they went through, obviously, the work with the children checks, the police checks, and they each had special lanyards identifying them uh, as someone who'd gone through those checks, which they had to wear at all points. So we held information nights in each state, uh, for parents to talk them through the process and how we were going to tackle things, uh, the role of the OCG, and to establish what we were trying to do to create a positive experience into things like meals and snacks, which we tried to keep as healthy as possible. Um, we had uh, dedicated spaces for rest and play for the kids. Um, the walls were also decorated with kids' artwork, uh, which personalised the, the dressing rooms and the green areas for them. We had dedicated toilet amenities that were only for kids, no adults alive. You might think that all that we've done there might seem a bit too much. It might seem that we went a little overboard. But of course, it only seems too much when nothing terrible has happened. Thank you. It's my pleasure now to uh, bring on uh, uh, David Reese, the acting director of Child Safe Organisations with the Office of the Children's Guardian. David. I suppose. The nuts and bolts of this is that if you employ a child or facilitate a child's employment, whether a child's under 15 years for entertainment, exhibition or still photography, or under 16 for modelling, payment is made or other material benefit, and the employment occurs in New South Wales, that this employment requires an authority. There's a code of practice that's mandatory requirement for employers of children and covers such areas as the hours of work specific to the age of the child. Some of these things also cover the supervision requirements. So the regulation stipulates that a parent or a guardian must be there at all times. However, when you employ a child under three years of age, you need to employ a registered nurse. And we're not black and white individuals. We understand that there are variations required to get the job done, but our focus is always on the safety of the child. We now 
I'd like to uh, introduce Morgan Lander, who's a trainer at the Office of the Children's Guardian. Please make him welcome again. My role and, and, and several people within the organisation's role is to actually work with all stakeholders in New South Wales and have children as members, clients, customers, uh, uh, even, even employees in, in the context of this sector. Uh, we have recently, in the last six months, had a series of meetings with quite a few of the people who are in this room where we systematically come out and talk about uh, your local environment, the environment in which these children are working in, and then we try and assist in a dialogue with yourself and your decision makers and the people on the front line as to how you can manage risk to create that child safe environment as well as the, the child safe, uh, child friendly culture. In the context of managing risk, uh, again, as Karen said, we try not to be prescriptive and say there are certain things that we tell you will work well in your sector. What we try and promote is a range of tools and resources and techniques and systems that hopefully will increase the likelihood of children <coughs> being safe, as well as feeling comfortable and engaged within your programs and activities and production, thinking of what makes them feel uncomfortable, scared or threatened or anxious. So actually engaging with your kids, not in a negative con uh, context, but actually saying to them, how can we make you feel comfortable while you're here with us in this production or this activity? What can we do to assist you? Um, and the flip side of that, when we're talking about professional standards and child cultures, is that a child centred, is actually talking to them about what to expect from adults. Um, training is a big part of what we recommend for any organisation. And it doesn't need to be formalised training where our representatives come out and do a PowerPoint slide with your staff or your volunteers. Training can be something as simple as an induction every day when your production's on site. Um, you, I could almost guarantee the majority of productions that are currently underway would have a daily work health and safety, occupational health and safety, um, risk management type briefing in the morning. Embed your child safe messages within that brief each day. But if you want to empower every single person within the organisation, whether it be a, a tertiary student who's there for a day, or whether it be your longest standing staff member, that if a child comes to you and says they feel uncomfortable, we need to act and respond on that immediately. The small passive behaviours I spoke about at the start, those small little deviations from professional standards, if they are picked up early, you are far less likely to have a child sexually abused, physically assaulted, um, emotionally destroyed through psychological abuse. So from the context of reporting, we talk about uh, complaints and allegations policies. Um, all these policies and procedures underpin what you should be doing, but the culture and the leadership within your organisation should be at the forefront to say, we're running an, a, an entity, an activity, or a production that has children involved. We need you all to be our eyes and ears. We need everyone on site to recognise what the professional standard is and how you should respond if something does go wrong. I, I really want to drive home a message today um, from, from our point of view is when kids feel actively involved in the organisation, as we heard about this morning with Tori and with Kai, they will feel less likely uh, to uh, maintain secrecy if someone is asking them to, re to remain quiet about inappropriate behaviour. So from the context of what sort of layers and management you can put in place, it isn't just about policy and procedure, it's about empowering young kids within your uh, organisation, and the best way to do that is to ask them. Um, it's about educating everyone across the organisation as to what the expectations are for them from a professional point of view, as well as how they respond, if there's any sort of concerns that they feel uncomfortable with, right through to the way in which the organisation leads and has a culture of kids are important to us, it's vital that they have a, a, an enjoyable and fun experience. If we don't uh, feel that's occurring, what are the implications? A huge thing for us that we've seen in the last 10 years is a proactive organisation who puts these things in place is less likely to be scrutinised heavily and, and, and negatively by the media if something does go wrong. Um, so the final message for me, uh, and we're, as David said, we're going to be available to answer questions after today. Um, within all of your productions and all of your activities, please don't presume that someone within the organisation is likely to target a child for harm. When we heard the, the, the question about physical contact with children, our message is not that everyone is a danger, everyone is a risk and it's likely to occur. Our message is if you're proactive and you make the environment hard to offend in, it's undesirable for someone to target your organisation. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Manager and Executive Producer for the Gordon Frost Organisation. It's all about diligence, respect for the child, respect for the parents, and respect for the work. The one thing that I've learned over the years is that the children know, they know that they want to be performers and it's our job to give them the framework to let them become great performers. We, we had a quick chat outside and, and I'll be honest with you, Rolf Harris is haunting me. It's not just Rolf Harris, it's 
the whole um, Royal Commission into Children's, uh, you know, sexual assault of children, it, it would appear as an incredibly common behaviour that appears in every industry. And, and we were talking, there was a time in the past where people knew of people and turned a blind eye. There was a cone of silence, a Maxwell Smart cone of silence. Uh, honestly, do you think it's changing? I think it is changing with the processes that we've put in place. Um, you know, with the, the whole process of being vigilant with the children, having the right chaperones, having the police checks, doing all of that sort of thing. I mean, it, it is an industry where you, you know, you have to be at your best the whole time, but you are beholden to a group of people up here who, who carry the birth strings. Like, That's one of the reasons why it's really important to work top down as well as bottom up, so that the whole of the production team involved in a particular show are well aware that right from the top of the organisation, right the way down, that the issue is taken seriously, uh, that the strictures and requirements that are being applied are absolutely supported, uh, that the whole environment is about supporting kids um, and about not allowing uh, those kind of situations to happen uh, and creating the environment where it is almost impossible for someone to be alone with a child who's not their parent. Um, so LPA has long been involved in child employment but more from sort of advising our members who are employers in the live entertainment industry around basic compliance but we're moving now towards this whole idea that Morgan was raising around being a child safe organisation so we've just developed a template policy for the industry which we'll be putting out for a consultation for everybody to have a look at. So if you're an employer in, in live performance and you've got an interest in developing a child safe policy for your organisation, there is now going to be one available and also a child safe code of conduct appendix at the back of it. And it looks at things like recruiting staff and complaint handling procedures and all the sort of things that we've been talking about. Um, Catherine is a, a contestant coordinator. So first of all, just tell us the job that you do. Um, yes, I'm Catherine, I work with Ambience Entertainment, so we produce children's entertainment, in particular <coughs> game shows for 11 to 13 year olds, so I audition, cast and coordinate all the children that take part in the shows. What are you taking away from today? Because you're obviously very experienced. Are there messages you've heard that you reinforce because you agree with them? Yes, definitely. Um, it's really interesting to hear the parents that spoke earlier say that they like to be informed because we definitely take care to um, have lots of dialogue with the parents. They're probably sick of hearing from me through emails and phone calls and from pre-audition right up to when their show is going on air. Um, we also make sure that in the audience area where the parents and other children sit, that we have lots of posters around, um, child-friendly ones and ones for parents that explain the code of conduct, code of practice, and um, our tips and advice on the day. Um, another thing was, in one of the presentations it says, um, children we are not warm props so it's, it's definitely important to think of the children as individuals not just as a cog in the wheel of the production I, can i say it's been a great pleasure uh, to be here as someone who was in the television show for five years uh, it's a wild and woolly world and it's great uh, that i think this sort of seminar is happening please stay for lunch and a chat thank you